Hi everybody, my name is Papillon Little. I am the K-5 Science Coordinator for Atlanta Public Schools. Today, I am actually going to show you how to use a resource that we have purchased for the district. Um, it's an awesome resource, it's called Gizmos. And Gizmos, in short, is a resource that teachers can use with students to do interactive uh, investigations. So experiments, uh, investigations in regards to science learning that's taking place in the classroom. This is an excellent resource, especially when we are going to a virtual option of learning or if you don't have as many materials in your school um, to do an actual experiment. So this is always a good supplement to use and it's available in my backpack to all of the teachers in the district grades three through five um, if you go to my backpack you will see the icon and it will take you directly to it because it's aligned with your infinite campus um, me on the other hand because i have a district account i cannot go through my backpack so um, i don't want people to log in from the original page like i'm doing because you should already have access in my backpack but once you access through my backpack you're going to see a screen that looks similar to this you're going to be in um and so what you want to do is you want to look at the tabs up here near the top you have where you can actually locate gizmos or those investigations so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to click on find gizmos now as you can see once i clicked on find gizmos it's going to ask me if i want to search by the academic standard if I want to search by grading topic or if I want to search by a textbook. And so a lot of times we have schools that have uh, HMH or they might have a textbook of a, a, a STEM schools in certain states. They have their textbooks that actually align um, to gizmos. But in regards to Georgia right now, I don't believe that if you have STEM schools that your textbook is going to align. But I do, I do believe that it does align with HMH for those HMH schools. So also before we go into the gizmos up here at the top where I have pointed where it says my classes. Here is where you will actually see your role. It's aligned with uh, your role is actually aligned with Infinite Campus. So you should be able to see the classes that you have assigned to you in Infinite Campus. Um, since I don't have any classes assigned to me, as you can see, it just says class one. So I will have to create my own classes or build my own classes out. All right, but that is where you would be able to see your information. But today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the gizmos. So I'm going to go at find gizmos. Um, I would do what uh, probably is the best recommendation is going by the standard because third through fifth, you want to make sure that you're teaching the line to the standard. So we're going to use the standard. So when you click on the standard, it's going to show you all the different states where they have gizmos that align to their standards. Of course, we are in Georgia. Um, remember, we do not use common uh, core state standards and we do not use next generation state standards. We have standards that's aligned to Georgia, which are the Georgia standards of excellence. So it's very important that you click on Georgia. All right. So once you click on Georgia, you will see that you do have access to math. Um, that would be another presentation, but then we're going to focus today more so on science. Like I said, this is going to be a resource that is available grades 3 through 12. So you will see all the grade levels in elementary 3 through 5, and then you'll see middle school 6 through 8, and then you will see the science courses in the high school areas. So I'm just going to click on what you might be, what you might see available to you as a third grade teacher. Just coming down so what you will see is you see the standards and then of under the standards you also will see here which is the gizmo that align so I am for third grade I'm just going to click on one for an example here you have it just a little larger All right, so making it a little larger. So here you have where it says growing plants, and that is aligned to standard S3E1B, plan to carry out an investigation to describe properties, color, texture, capacity to retain water, and ability to support growth of plants of soil and soil types and clay and loam. So I'm going to click on 
growing plants here once i click on it it says launch gizmo i'm just gonna click on launch gizmo all right okay and then what you will see is you will actually see the gizmo up here so here with this gizmo in particular what the students can do is they can actually select a type of seed so here you have a tomato here you have a bean here you have a turnip and here I'm just gonna collect, select another tomato plant and you can put them in the different types of uh, soil pots and you can also add different variables so like say for instance in this first one you can add a lot of water here you could subtract the water or you can add it here I might add some more water and here I might just put a little bit of water all right and so you can also add other different variables so I'm adding fertilizer and compost to this one I might add just fertilizer here I might just add compost here and then here I might not add anything just to see what it might do and compare it to the tomato plant that has more water and that has fertilizer and compost all right so you can have your students make a claim on what they think might happen um before they actually do it but then this is something that you can assign to them and they can actually do it themselves or you just click on play very similar to when they would grow a seed plant uh for themselves they will actually see these plants growing based on the different variables that you have provided to them all right and now if you look at the different plant growth you can see that some grew higher than others um if you look at the tomato plant in general which is a you can see that it grew to the height of 24.9 centimeters whereas the one in d grew to 9.9 .9 centimeters now the reason why the one in a grew higher is because of course remember we added fertilizer and compost to the soil which means that it gave that plant more ability to grow all right also we added more water and in d we added less water so with that being said you had uh more variables that helped plant a to grow higher and stronger than plant d so this is just an example an investigation that you can do with your students um, in regards to growing plants or in regards to that standard in general because we do have um different standards even in the the, the k2 space even though this is a line to three five uh you do have uh, uh areas where you can actually insert this so like say for instance with um the plant life cycle it, it, that's something that the students will study in uh, in second grade and then in first grade they'll study um, the parts of a plant so here's something where you can use to engage where you seeing the plant actually grow but then you can have them identify okay what stage of the plant is this or can you identify the parts of a plant so even though it might not be uh, a three through five uh, standard a K through two st uh, teacher can still utilize this all right and so I am going to go back and show you what fourth grade would look like. And so here you have fourth grade standards. And I'm just going to scroll all the way down. And you will see everything that is blue, that is going to be a gizmo that is aligned to that standard. All right. And like I said, once again, this is good because... Um, a lot of times, even with fourth grade, they are studying the ecosystem, and even though you might have STEM scopes and it has investigations that deal with the ecosystem, having a virtual, uh, a virtual, uh, a, a, a virtual resource where you can actually see what would happen if there is an effect to an ecosystem uh, will help the students, especially when it comes to the assessments that they'll be taking. All right, and so the last grade level I want to show today is going to be fifth grade so I'll click on it all right and so fifth grade is very similar you will see the different um, gizmos that are attached to the fifth grade based on the standard and so 
I want to focus on the standard that uh, the fifth grade would currently, uh, as of February, would be engaged in. So if you look at S5, P2B, design a complete simple electric circuit and explain all the necessary components. Um, like I said, a lot of times in the district we might have uh, teachers who might say, hey, we don't have the, the materials to actually complete investigations um, based on, you know, funding, based on maybe they, you know, didn't renew their kits. But like I said, Gizmos is available to all of our teachers here in the district three through five so let's say if, if we look at this one uh that's called circuit builder i'm just gonna click on lunch gizmo all right and so now we have the gizmos to open up i want you to see what it looks like all right so here what you would have since the students are are actually designing a circuit what you would do is you can start with a battery, right? And then, of course, we want to use a wire. We might take a switch and let's see if we can spread this out to make sure. And then we'll take a light bulb. All right. So now, if you look at this gizmo, you see as soon as I attach that light bulb, that the light bulb actually went on. Um, the reason why is because you have a full circuit, and you have an on and off switch, so you can actually turn the circuit on, or you can turn it off. Now, the good thing about this uh, gizmo in particular is it gives you different things that you can use to create that circuit. So, say for instance, if you want to take the battery out, you can add another battery to see if that will work. Now, as you see, we added a 9-volt battery, and if you look at the effect that the 9-volt battery had on the, the actual light bulb, you will see that the light bulb actually is brighter, all right? Um, that's because it's getting more volts of energy coming to it, all right? So, we're going to turn that off, and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually see if we can test uh, different types other than wires, so um, let's see if we can test different types of insulators or conductors to see if they are, in fact, the insulator or conductor. All right, so here we just tried iron, and we know that that's still going to allow the light bulb to function, so we're going to turn that off. But now, what we're going to do, let's try yarn, right? So I think we most know what is going to occur here. Because if you click on, as you can see, the light bulb is not lighting up. So what the students will start to see is they will say, oh, you know what? There's a difference between insulators and conductors. And so some of them are going to allow um, the, the electricity to flow through them in order to power that light. And some of them are not. All right, so we can just take one of these out and let's just say we'll use a couple of more. So we'll just say silver, we'll put that here. All right, silver works. And then plastic, we'll put that here and we see that plastic does not work. All right, now if you want to get more rigorous with this, you can also make series circuits so you can take or maybe I can just go here just add that okay and a wire and as you can see as I have taken uh, both of those wires you see now instead of just having one light to light up we now have two lights to light up all right, so it's a different it's different ways that you can go with these uh, gizmos. They are very helpful. They assist you if you do not have a lot of resources. Um, and I'm just going to go back to the home page. Uh, this is what the home page looks like. But like I said, this is available to you in uh, 
in your my backpack page and by all means please utilize it if it's something that aligns with the standard even if you have the materials uh, available to you and it could be a stem skull kit or it could be just kits in general even if you have those materials by all means i would still utilize online because when students are taking the standardized assessment they are going to be assessed in different with different types of variables they're going to be assessed with uh seeing different types of ways that you can plan to carry out an investigation so you want to definitely give them a, a diverse uh, way of looking at different experiments that they can complete all right so thanks so much for listening to us we really appreciate um the technology department for reaching out to our office uh to actually complete this video to assist our teachers we look forward to seeing you in the schools and thank you so much and have a good day